What we're going to look at now is citing sources in your papers. And there are actually several methods that you can use to cite sources. Uh, and so what we want to do, though, is whatever method you use to cite a source, the basic principles are going to be the same. When you use outside material in your paper, Um, it's very important uh, that you cite the sources. You must say what the sources are. This is important for a number of reasons. Uh, for example, uh, if you're writing a paper and your reader looks at it and says, hey, I want to know more about this particular topic, if you've cited your sources, uh, the reader can look up and learn more. Another really important reason to cite your sources is because you want the reader to trust you. You want to show the reader that your sources are reliable. So what that means is the reader can look and see uh, where this information came from and can say, OK, this is a good, reliable source. Therefore, I can trust what this writer is saying in this paper. So by showing that the information you've used is not just something you just made up out of your head, uh, but is something that you got from some place reliable, the reader is going to trust you more. So that's another reason. Uh, to show what your sources are. Uh, another really important reason to show your sources is a matter of fairness to the original source. Uh, this is important because here in the United States, what we have is uh, a principle called intellectual property. And basically what that means is if somebody has gone to the trouble of creating something, uh, whether it's doing some original research or even a creative thing like a story or a song or something, uh, that we want to give credit to that person who has created this piece of work. And so when you're using something that somebody else created, uh, it is fair to the source uh, to give that person credit. Even if you're not paying the person money, um, it's important to give credit to the original source um, as a way of rewarding their creativity for coming up with this uh, information. Now, there are a lot of different systems that can be used to cite sources. Uh, the main thing is the basic principles are the same no matter what system you're using. Now, the format I'm going to be concentrating on is known as the MLA format. That stands for Modern Language Association. That's the format that you're going to be expected to use usually when you're writing a paper in an English class or a literature class or maybe a foreign language class. Uh, so the MLA standard, it's actually an international worldwide standard for papers in the languages and literature. Another style format that you may be asked to use is known as the APA. That stands for American Psychological Association. That's the format that you're going to be using uh, typically in the sciences. Of course, psychology and things like sociology. Uh, also, uh, topics such as uh, history or economics uh, will often be using the APA style. So when you're taking a class in the sciences or social sciences, you're probably going to use the APA style. There's another style called Chicago. 
And that one's used for a whole lot of uh, business writing. So if you're taking a business class where you're expected to do uh, a research paper, you're going to be using the Chicago style. And there are some <coughs> other styles out there. Uh, for example, the Associated Press has its own style guide. Uh, it's actually known as the Associated Press Style Guide and Libel Manual because it's not just about how to format things, but also how to avoid getting sued, things like that. Uh, so whatever course you're taking in the future or whatever field you go into, uh, you may have a different style that you're expected to use. However, the basic principles are the same for all of them. So once you learn one particular style, um, you can uh, transfer that style to other uh, styles that you're using. The basic principles are the same. Now, when you're learning how to do each of these different styles, uh, one thing that's really important is you don't have to memorize those things. Uh, what you need basically is a good style guide for whatever style you're using. And I have an example here of a textbook, and your textbook may vary, but it's likely to be very similar to this. Uh, this textbook has sections for the different styles you might be expected to use. So there's a tab here for the MLA style, and another for the APA style, and another for the Chicago style. And so, um, depending on your textbook, you may have a textbook that has these style guides in them, uh, especially if you have some form of a grammar manual or something uh, that uses that. Um, other things that um, uh, you may have a textbook that doesn't have very much in the way of a style guide, or you may have a textbook where there's some style guide stuff in there, but there's not very much of it. And this is where the internet really comes in useful. Uh, there's a very good website out there that can give you the details at least of the most mainstream styles, and that's the Purdue Online Writing Lab. So if you go on the internet and do an internet search for Purdue OWL, OWL Online Writing Lab, and so if you search for that online, you can get that. So if you don't have a good style manual ready to hand, or if the book you have is very sketchy, uh, that's an internet website that you can go to. Now, as I mentioned, I'm concentrating on the MLA style, The MLA style has um, two components to it, and so it works together with those two components. The first component is an in-text citation, and that's going to be a very brief mention of the source. Within the text of your paper. And what we do with the MLA citation, the reason we can keep it brief is, first off, we don't want to trip the reader up. When we are doing our citations, uh, if we were to put a whole big pile of information right in the middle of a paragraph, uh, then by the time the reader gets to the end of that pile of information, uh, he or she has forgotten where, where they, they were in the sentence. So what you want to do is uh, keep that very brief and I'll be going to, into that more in the next video. Uh, and the reason we can keep these in-text citations brief is because we have this second component, which is the works cited list, and that is um, all the detailed information about your sources, and that comes at the end of the paper. So the way this two-component system works is that within the text, as the reader is reading, uh, you'll have this in-text citation, and that alerts the reader, hey, this is coming from an outside source. Then at the very end of the paper, the reader can look up and find the details about the source. So this is where the reader can go to find out, for example, 
is this a reliable source? Is this a trustworthy source uh, that can then lead the reader to trust the rest of what you're saying in the paper? Uh, and with this detailed information, by the way, this is something that's very important. It's not just the web address. A lot of times I'll be reading a paper and when I get to the works cited list at the end, all I see is just a list of web addresses. That's not enough because that doesn't give me any information about who the source is, so it's not fair to the source. It doesn't give me enough information to look it up and learn more. And it doesn't give me enough information to know that the source is reliable. So in the works cited list, this is means to be very complete information so that the reader knows what the source is and knows that source is trustworthy. 